Imagine being able to double, triple, and even quadruple your reading speed. What you're about to learn are the secrets of speed reading, not only to improve your reading speed and efficiency, but also to dramatically improve the comprehension of what you've read. In other words, you'll use your reading time much more efficiently and to much greater advantage. Suppose you're handed a report before a big meeting. Wouldn't you like to be able to literally zip through that report in a few minutes? And what about research material? How much time could you save by being able to read research material at an accelerated rate? The same applies with newspapers, magazines, reports, business information, courses, etc. The list is endless of the material that you could speed read if only you had the skill. And if you have the ability to absorb this material three or four times faster than you do now, it would allow you more time to do other things or more time to learn more. At the very least, you won't feel overwhelmed by all the things that you don't now have time to read. You know, there's a secret to speed reading that's the core concept behind all speed reading systems. Some of the methods may differ, but the main secret to doubling and tripling your reading speed is simply this. Our brains are capable of hearing only 250 words a minute, but our brains can see over 2,000 words a minute. Let me repeat that. Our brains are capable of hearing only 250 words a minute, but our brain can see over 2,000 words a minute. You see, we've been conditioned so that when we read, we hear the words in our minds. Remember grade school and, and the Dick and Jane books? Your teacher had you reading books out loud to the class, and you learned to read by saying and hearing the words. This slows down our reading considerably, since our brains can only hear 250 words a minute. And because we were conditioned to read this way, our brain has been trained to process reading with a mental voice. That is, you pronounce the printed words silently in your mind as you read. By the way, many people also tend to mouth the words as they read. That is, the words are silently pronounced as they're being read. Mouthing the words is still another barrier preventing optimum reading speed. What you have to realize is that our brains can see and can comprehend words at a rate of 2,000 a minute. And for some, it's even higher. Imagine being able to go from reading 250 words a minute to reading 10 times that amount. It can be simple if you're willing to invest a small amount of time up front right now in retraining your brain in how it reads printed materials. Remember, we're taught as children to read out loud, sounding out words and being rewarded for correct pronunciation. This has been conditioned into our brains and has limited our potential. Now what we have to do is to retrain our brains to read in a whole new way, a way that maximizes what our brains can see and comprehend. We call this new speed reading method visual encoding because we're creating a direct path between the nerves in our eyes and our brains and completely bypassing the auditory processing of the information the way we were originally taught in school. The way we're going to teach you to use this material involves a series of simple exercises in your workbook that will begin to break down your old auditory conditioning and replace it with a visual encoding method. With the visual encoding method, you're taking in entire sections of text, sometimes an entire page at one time. This is a completely different way from the old-fashioned eye-focusing method, where you focus on each line of text one word at a time while you read. Remember, this is the way you were taught to read in school, partially for feedback purposes so your teacher would know if you knew the words and the correct pronunciation. But we're going to retrain you starting now. The first step in our retraining process is to see whether or not you're someone who actually mouths the words as you read them. This can slow you down considerably. Now we've developed a very simple exercise that in just a matter of minutes will tell you whether or not you do this. You can do this exercise using either your workbook or with a newspaper. What you'll do is you'll place a pencil in your mouth, holding it in your lips, the end of it slightly in one hand, then read. If you can feel the pencil vibrating in your hand, this means that you're mouthing the words or reading with your lips. Remember, this slows down your reading time even more than just mentally hearing the words in your mind. 
Now stop the tape and do the first speed reading exercise in your workbook or use a newspaper if you'd like. Once you've finished exercise number one, restart the tape again. What happened? Did you feel the pencil vibrating in your hand? If you did, you're mouthing the words as you read. If you want to increase your reading speed, this is a habit that you're going to need to break before moving on to the other exercises. Just by being conscious of the fact that you mouth the words will bring almost a dramatic increase in your reading speed. If you're having this problem, practice reading with the pencil as in the mouth exercise. You'll find that over time, your mouthing of the words will stop. Another way that we slow our reading time down is by reading in a series of skips and jerks, sometimes back skipping, since the eye can only focus on a small amount of text. When you back skip, your eyes move back a sentence, a whole paragraph, sometimes an entire page, to make sure that you've understood what it was that you read. In many cases, this is something that's done automatically. It's something many people taught themselves when they were first starting to learn how to read. In fact, if you back skip, you may not even be aware of it that you're doing it. In effect, what you're doing is reading and then rereading whole sections of text, taking twice as long as you need to read something. If you want to, just as an experiment, check to see if you back skip. Open up a book or a newspaper and put a small mark on any point on the page. It can be a check or an X or even just a small colored dot. What the mark is doesn't really matter. What does matter is if while you're reading you see that mark more than once, you're back skipping. If you find yourself back skipping, stop reading for a moment. Close your eyes, take two or three deep breaths, and then begin reading again from where you left off. Like mouthing the words, back skipping will disappear just by being conscious of the process. Again, just the fact that you're aware that you're doing it will help you eventually break the habit. The next major reading slow-up is the tendency to read line by line. Now, there's nothing wrong with this kind of reading. In fact, when you're reading something like poetry or dialogue in a play, where you want to mentally hear what the characters are saying, line by line reading may be preferable. However, if you want to absorb as quickly as possible whatever it is that you have to read, the visual encoding method you will learn in this course will help you overcome the line-by-line -line reading habit and greatly increase your reading speed. And remember this, you'll find this method helpful for any kind of reading, be it schoolwork or the need to quickly go through material that you're handed right before an important meeting. Now that you're aware of some of the primary conditioning habits that might slow down your reading speed, you can move forward. Basically, there's five steps involved in the visual encoding speed reading method which allow you to improve both reading speed and comprehension. One, read in a comfortable place. Two, figure out your objective. Three, continue moving ahead as you read, not back skipping. Four, read from top to bottom rather than from side to side. Five, become an active reader. Now let's go over these five steps in detail and complete a series of special reading exercises that will retrain your brain in the visual encoding method. Step one, reading in a comfortable place. It sounds obvious, but it's often neglected and it can have a major impact on speed and comprehension. By reading in a comfortable place, we don't mean a place where you're likely to fall asleep. Instead, a place with good reading light, where you can sit upright in a relaxed position, but where your spine is kept straight. A sturdy, firm, but comfortable armchair with a good reading light is what's recommended. When reading texts for work or for school, you might want to sit at a desk with the open book that you're reading kept as flat as possible. Loosen top buttons or uncomfortable clothing. You may even want to take off your shoes, but don't get so comfortable that you begin to drift off. That's why even when you're working at a desk, it's important that you sit in a chair that will keep your spine straight. Get comfortable but stay alert. As for figuring out your objective, you're going to want to know what you're reading and why. By figuring out your objective, you're creating a goal in your reading and a plan for reaching that goal. Are you reading just for enjoyment? Will you have to answer questions or make a presentation on what you're reading? Is what you're reading related to your job? There are a number of ways to figure out your objective. Here's four of them. 
First of all, get an overview of the reading material. In other words, find out what the core ideas are, what the piece is all about, by checking through it. Next, if there's a table of contents, look at it. You might want to see if there are chapter headings. Sometimes, particularly in written coursework material, there are very brief descriptions at the beginning of each chapter detailing what that chapter is going to be about. You'll also want to find out about how long the piece is. So check how many pages there are, if there are footnotes or anything else that might make the piece longer than it appears. Finally, you should flip through the pages. As you do this, don't worry about actually reading the material. Ask yourself questions like, what is the language of the piece? Is it difficult or is it an easy read? What kind of terminologies are used? Are there charts, graphs, or maps? Eventually, through the visual encoding method, you'll be able to literally take in ideas on entire pages of text simply by flipping through the pages. After you've figured out your objective, begin to read the material. You'll want to continue moving ahead with what you're reading. Now, what I mean by moving ahead is no back skipping or going back a page or a paragraph. Moving or scanning with your finger along the lines of words can help prevent back skipping. Moving ahead will naturally increase your reading speed as well as actively engage your mind in what it is that you're reading. Instead of stopping, checking, and rechecking what you're reading, you move through it at a steady pace, finding that your eyes tire less easily and that you're staying much more alert. You'll end up also comprehending much more of what you're reading. The fourth step involves reading from the top to the bottom of the page instead of from side to side. By visually taking in a group of lines or an entire paragraph at once with your eyes and then moving down to the next section, you won't be reading word by word or even line by line, but actually training your eye and brain to read whole chunks of material at once. This is really the heart of visual encoding, in essence taking in entire sections of text. Think of being very thirsty and yet only knowing how to take little sips of water through a straw. Imagine how your thirst would be quenched when someone points out to you that you can just pick up the glass and really take a good swig. It's the same with wanting to read faster and finally learning how. You'll be amazed at how much information you can retain this way while also greatly increasing your reading speed. The final step involves what we call reading actively. By this we mean get active or physically involved in the reading process. Turn the pages decisively and don't go back. Again, use your finger as a guide from the top to the bottom of the page is another way of active reading. Most important, keep your attention on what you're reading and don't let your mind wander. Do you have a newspaper handy? If not, stop the tape and go and get one. When you've got a newspaper and a pencil in hand, restart the tape. Now it's time for our second exercise. And by the way, I'd suggest that after successfully completing each of these exercises, you might want to reward yourself somehow. Perhaps take a short break or promise yourself that you'll take in a movie that you really want to see. In any case, by offering yourself these little rewards, you'll actually be giving yourself a little extra support and incentive to complete the course. In any case, what I want you to do now is to pick up the newspaper and with your pencil draw a line down the center of one column. All right. Now look at the group of words on one side of the line and then the other group of words on the other side of the line. And don't worry about seeing every word. In fact, for this exercise, don't even be overly concerned about comprehension. Although before our course is over, you will in fact learn to read not by seeing the words, but by comprehending them. All right. Turn off the tape and do this exercise for a few minutes. When you're ready, turn the tape back on again. Okay, the whole point of this exercise was to teach you to move your eyes more rapidly over the printed page. You see, in order to improve comprehension while your reading speed increases, you need to be able to read in groups of phrases or words. This is essentially what you're trying to do with the newspaper exercise. In fact, you might want to try this again, but without using a drawn line down the center. Start with a children's book or something simple. In a short time, you'll begin to increase the amount of material that you can see at any one time. Now look at exercise number two in your workbook. What we've done is underline only the nouns and verbs. 
I'd like you to just read the underlying words as quickly as you can. You should be able to comprehend the paragraph just by reading the underlying words. The reason you're doing this exercise is that, once again, even by focusing on nouns and verbs, you can still comprehend what you're reading. This will help you conquer your fear that you have to read every word in order to really understand what it is that's going on in the reading. When you finish reading the paragraph, see if you can answer the following questions about it. Now stop the tape and begin working on exercise number two. Now, one of the important steps in reaching your top reading speed is the ability to read from the top of the page down rapidly. All this really means is that you'll be reading vertically rather than linearly. That is, rather than having your eyes go across a line, have your eyes move down the page. Have you ever noticed how newspapers and magazines have columns of text? This is so that they can be read more quickly and easily. The eye can see and comprehend much more information when moving down a narrower line of text instead of using the usual book format with full page margins. In your next exercise, you can use a newspaper or the material provided in your workbook. You'll take in each line or group of lines with your eyes as an entire chunk of text and then move down to the next group. This is called chunking and it's a very effective way of getting as much information as possible in just a quick glance. You might put your finger in the center of the page and move it down with your eyes following the motion. Again, chunking is just another one of a number of tools that you can use to visually encode the material that you're reading. Go to your workbooks, stop the tape, read the instructions, and do exercise number three. After you're finished, restart the tape again. What I'd like to do now is have you try a series of exercises in your workbook. You'll see a series of exercises labeled 4A to 4C. You'll notice that each of these exercises has one paragraph followed by a series of questions. Each paragraph from A to C becomes increasingly more difficult to read. Now what I'm going to have you do when you read the paragraph marked 4A is to read only each line of the paragraph three or four words into the line rather than at the beginning of the line. In the same way you'll be reading two or three words from the end of the line. And understand, even by just reading those words in the middle, and by reading from the top to bottom, your mind will still take in all of the words in the paragraph and comprehend them. By answering the questions following the paragraph, you'll be able to see that your comprehension of the material is surprisingly good. Okay, see if you can answer the questions following paragraph 4A. Turn off the tape, relax, and do the exercise. When you're finished, turn the tape back on again. So how did you do on exercise 4A? On the following page in your workbook, you'll find a similar exercise, 4C, involving a paragraph that's a bit more difficult to read. You might want to try this advanced exercise right away, or if you'd like, go back and go through this slightly easier exercise, 4B. You may notice that with these exercises, the core area of the text has been darkened for you to see it easier. However, the darkened area gets smaller and smaller. In other words, you're looking at fewer and fewer words, yet you should still be able to answer the questions asked at the end of each section. If you answer three of the five questions incorrectly for exercise 4A, we would suggest that you do the remaining exercises in the order they appear in your workbook. Even if you answered all the questions correctly, you may still want to do both exercises. So stop the tape, read the exercises, and then answer the questions following the exercise. When you've checked your answers, restart the tape. Now I'm going to show you a way of reading more actively than you might have imagined. The following exercise in your workbook, there's some text that I'd like you to read in the following way. Run your finger down the center of the workbook page at an ever-increasing speed. You might also use a pencil or some other pointer to help you. Allow your eyes to follow your finger down the page looking at the center of the page. Begin to keep pace by focusing hard on your finger as it runs down the center of the page. It might help to keep your eyes just a touch above each printed line. With this type of page skimming, you'll tend to focus on nouns and verbs even though they aren't underlined. 
what you'll find is that you'll be gathering the most important data out of what you're reading. This is sometimes called scanning, and the advantages are obvious. In fact, if you continue to scan at an ever-increasing speed, you'll be reading each page in two or three seconds, and you'll be comprehending most of the material. Scanning also prevents the backslipping problem I talked about earlier, and it will also help you break the habit of hearing the words being read in your head. With scanning, you're relying on purely visual reading. Your mind will literally be processing information at a much faster rate, so that some words might not seem to be as in focus as others. You'll still end up with a visual picture, though, of what you're reading. Try this method on this next exercise in your workbook. Get a strong mental image of the person, place, or thing that's being described. Then see if you can write your own summary about what happened in the paragraph. This procedure does take practice, but you'll find that reading will become quicker, easier, and more enjoyable. At the same time, you'll actually be retaining much more of the material. You might also want to practice this technique with a book that you've already read and that you've enjoyed. Eventually, whenever you read anything, your mind will be totally engaged in the process of reading and comprehending the material. Okay, now stop the tape and begin exercise number five in your workbooks. Once you've completed the exercises, you might want to go back and begin reading normally, that is, word for word. And you know what? You'll find that even your normal reading speed has increased. In fact, you'll actually find it difficult to go back to normal reading. It will seem slow to you. Think of it this way. Have you ever been driving a car in a freeway and then moved into street traffic? Notice how 40 miles per hour suddenly feels more like 10 miles per hour after you've been doing 55 or 65? It's very similar to going from ultra speed reading back to normal reading. However, there are times when you're going to want to take the scenic route. That's when you will want to read normally or word for word. You see, speed reading is an invaluable tool, a tool that you can choose to use at the times that you want, like breezing through business information, reports, books, newspapers, documents, etc. But for, say, a romance novel or a murder mystery, you might want to hang on to every word, so you would read normally. But with the knowledge of how to speed read, at least you have the option of scanning until you get to the good parts. All right, now stop the tape and begin reading the text at your normal speed. After reading a page or so, restart the tape and you'll learn how to increase your reading speed even more. By having completed the preceding exercises and by practicing with a newspaper or easy to read book, you'll find that your reading speed has increased dramatically with no loss of comprehension. Look, I'll prove it to you. Go back to any of the exercises in your workbook. Look at your watch, noting the time, and then begin reading. When you've finished, check your watch again. Now suppose you first looked at your watch, it was 9.17. You read the text and checked your watch again. It's now 9.23. It's taken six minutes for you to read the text. You can now tell how many words each page of text has by counting the words on the second line. There's usually no tab or indentation here. Then counting how many lines on the page and multiplying the two. For example, exercise 4A has nine words on its second line and is approximately 15 lines long. 15 times 9 equals 135. So there are approximately 135 words of text on the page. If you'd like to time yourself, stop the tape. When you've finished, restart the tape again. Now, by using all of the methods we've taught you, the maximum that you can probably increase your reading speed to is about 900 words a minute. Granted, this is a lot faster than your original 250 words a minute might have been, but you can transcend even this. Before we show you this lightning speed method, let's review the steps of our ultra speed reading program. One, read in a comfortable place with a good reading light and a sturdy chair that will keep your spine straight. Your physical environment is an important part of, of being able to pay attention to and comprehend what you're reading. Two, figure out your objective. You can do this by getting an overview of the material, looking over the entire piece or book quickly to figure out its tone, 
what it's all about, and so on. You can actually go through each page, letting your eyes rest on a page for about four seconds. Three, continue moving ahead. See and accept words and phrases out of their normal order. See chunks of words or sections of a page of text. Also accept visual reassurance. Basically remember to read with your eyes. You see there's no need to hear the sounds of the words or phrases in your head. Four, read from top to bottom or down the page. Five, read actively. Now we've already mentioned some of the ways to read actively by turning pages decisively and using your finger to scan down the middle of a page. It's here where you can transcend the 900 words per minute maximum reading speed barrier. The secret is hand motion. Hand motion while reading accomplishes three things. One, it helps you establish the fastest possible eye movement. Two, it keeps your attention on the written material while actually enhancing your concentration. And three, it prevents back skipping. A way to use hand motion so that you can literally go through a text at two to four seconds a page is to, rather than just follow your finger down the middle of the page, use a sweeping broad S-like motion. You'll be using your entire hand rather than just one finger. If you open your workbook to exercise number six, you'll see a diagram showing the way that this wavy hand motion should look on a page of text. After using the diagram and reading the text, restart the tape. Ready to give it a try? Okay. First of all, pick up your workbook, still staying on exercise number six. Lay your hand palm down flat on the page with your fingers spread slightly. Make sure your hand is relaxed. You may want to shake it out a little before actually laying it on the book. Your movements will begin two lines from the top of the page. Sweep your hand from left to right. You'll move your hand down two or three lines on the right side of the page, returning the hand horizontally across to the left side of the page. It's important to remember that your eyes are not following the tips of your fingers, but are moving down the page at the same pace as the hand. Remember, your movements are beginning two lines from the top of the page. See as many words as possible and don't focus on single words. Repeat the motion I've just described a few times down the page. You may also want to try this on an easy to read book. When you finish the page, then turn the page and begin again. For this next exercise, you may want to go to your workbook and complete exercise number six again or use a book of your own. Please stop the tape now and restart it when you feel comfortable in doing this process. You know you can adjust your wavy hand motion according to your own needs. You may go very quickly when getting an overview of the text and you might move at a more leisurely pace when actually reading the text for comprehension. And remember, practice makes perfect. Pick up a book or go to any of the text in your workbook and read using the five steps along with this new wavy hand motion. And time yourself. You'll be surprised at just how fast you're now reading. If you've gotten up to, say, 1,200 words a minute or more, you're doing great. Okay, you might be thinking, so I can read much faster, but how can I apply this to my work or my studies? Well, let's take a look at how you would go about preparing for and then using our visual encoding method to allow yourself to be an ultra-speed reader. Suppose you have to read a book for a college course that you're taking. We'll assume that you've got tons of other work to do, both scholastic and job-oriented, and you've only got one night to read this book, and by that I mean the entire book. First of all, find yourself a comfortable chair and a good reading light, and of course, turn off the TV if it happens to be on. That's a distraction you really do want to avoid. Now you sit back and you begin reading the book using your wavy hand motion, going from the top of the page to the bottom. Let's suppose each page has about 400 words on it. Multiply 400 by 185, which is the total number of pages in this book. That comes to 74,000 words that you have to read. Of course, if you're zipping along at 1,200 words a minute, it should take you perhaps a little over an hour to read the entire book, taking in all of the various graphs and other lists into account. 
Just think, an hour to read an in-depth 185-page book and being able to comprehend it better than if you read it at your old reading speed, which might have taken you days. Look, this isn't necessarily something that you're going to be able to do right away. Like everything else, it takes practice, but you will be able to learn it and a lot faster than you might have ever believed possible. Now you might want to go to the last exercise in your workbook, exercise number seven. You can combine everything that you've learned and test your reading speed here. After you finish this exercise, reward yourself in some way. Take a break, put on some music you really like, or go see a movie. But most of all, have fun with this and good reading.